Good morning, good morning. A little bit different look here right now. Uh, my computer is in the shop. <laughs> and so I'm using my phone, and I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. I started one minute early. Um, <clears throat> can't show you the time because this phone that's recording this has the time. Uh, <clears throat> so it's 9.59 at the moment. I've got... Uh, Let's see, Elizabeth and Bob Meredith, hello, Kathy Eversall, you're watching, it is now 10 a.m. <laughs> uh, Victoria, good morning to you, Lisa Wiseman, hello, um, so thankful that you all are here. We're going to be in Revelation chapter 14, hello, Sheila B., we're going to look at verses 1 through 13, and my... Uh, <clears throat> recommendation is a book called Discipling. It probably looks backwards on there, but it's by Mark Devers, Mark Dever, uh, Discipling by Mark Dever. Hello, hello, how are you all doing? Um, this book is, I'm passionate about this, I really am. Uh, if you have ever taken somebody and purposely helped them to... Um, walk through life as a believer, to encourage them, to strengthen them, to build them up, to help them with scripture, to answer questions. Hello, Lou. Hello, Brianna. Good to see you. So glad you're here. Um, this book helps you to do that. We'll talk more about that in a minute, I suppose. Revelation 14, verses 1 through 13. This is primarily the 144,000 Jewish witnesses. <clears throat> and it comes um, to us. And it's, I'm going to tell you right now, it is not about uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses. It has nothing to do with that. So, um, <clears throat> how are you all doing today? It is cold outside. My computer is locked up in the shop. Uh, I downloaded that Big Sur uh, update and crushed it. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully I can get it back today, but he said it might take three or four days. He, he said he's had multiple... Um, MacBooks in with this same problem, and uh, so just to give you a heads up out there, the Big Sur update for your MacBook Pro MacBook, <laughs> it might take a toll on your computer. Um, all right, <clears throat> how's everybody? Y'all doing good? Miss Beamer is on. Hello, Miss Beamer. Good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Um, let's see. I've Told you all I'm doing Revelation 14, verses 1 through 13, the 144,000 Jewish witnesses. Today, we are also going to recommend Discipling by Mark Dever. Uh, this was a gift to me, I believe, by um, Pastor Greg Mosier, if I'm not mistaken. Um, <clears throat> maybe not. I think so. Um, we miss you and your hugs too, Brianna. I was watching a post that you were a part of. Richard, how you doing, buddy? Um, and it was talking about th things that we like about you. And uh, and I was thinking about your hugs. So there you go. Uh, we need to hug. With masks on. I know, we're not supposed to hug. Richard, good morning to you. Are you still out hunting? Are you back in town? I hope you have a, a good time out there. Uh, we are in Revelation chapter 14, verses 1 through 13 today. And Miss Polly, good morning. Welcome aboard. Um, I'm not going to say a whole lot more about this book other than if you want to mentor somebody, if you want to disciple somebody, this is the book you need to read by Mark Dever, Discipling. Um, my recommendation for today. All right. <clears throat> almost time to get started. Carolyn Coble is on board. It's almost time now. Since Carolyn's here, we could probably go ahead and get started. We've been waiting on you, Carolyn. We've been talking about you, saying as soon as Carolyn gets here, we can get started. Uh, Rick. Hey, Rick. How are you, man? Uh, I hope you have a great weekend, too. <clears throat> Sell three houses today before you call it a day. All right. It's Friday. You know, go ahead and go ahead and sign the papers on three. You'll be all right. Now, if you can't sell three, then go ahead and list uh, a few for sale. All right. All right. It is uh, four minutes after 10 and I'm going to start reading to you um, <clears throat> Revelation chapter 14 verses 1 through 13. Um, we might do something different today. Let's, let's, um, let's discuss each verse as we go. We haven't done that before. All right. 
And I looked, and behold, the Lamb was standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his name and the name of his Father written on their foreheads. Well, the Lamb is Jesus. Hello, Amber. Um, <clears throat> and the 144,000 are 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. Hello, Sue and Herm. Welcome aboard. Um, and and these Jewish, they're like 144,000 Billy Grahams, and they've got Jesus' name and the Father's name written on their forehead, and that's uh, in contrast to uh, those who have taken the mark of the beast, which will be talked about more uh, in verses to come. And they're on Mount Zion, Jerusalem. All right, verse 2, And I heard a voice from heaven, like the sound of many waters. And Neil Green is here? Wow, hey. Um, <clears throat> like the sound of many waters and like the sound of loud thunder, and the voice which I heard was like the sound of harpists playing on their harps. So this is, wow, this is an incredible sound. This is um, <clears throat> the sound of waters, the sound of harps, the sound of thunder, and it's a voice from heaven. So now... We need to see what it is going to present to us. Verse 3, And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders, and no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been pur purchased from the earth. So this song belongs to them. This is their song, and they're the only ones that can sing it. Um, <clears throat> verse 4, these are the ones who have not been defiled with women, for they have kept themselves chaste, their virgins. Mm. Hey, Lori. Um, these are the ones who follow the Lamb, Jesus, wherever he goes. So whatever he says, that's, that's what they do. Hey, Marcy. <clears throat> um, these have been purchased from among men as first fruits to God and to the Lamb. They belong to Jesus. These are his disciples, his, um, his chosen ones, the 144,000. They're the Jewish witnesses. They're the Billy Grahams who are going to preach the gospel uh, to the people of Jerusalem, to the people of the end times. Verse 5, And no lie was found in their mouth. They are blameless. Uh, they are blameless truth tellers, and they're telling the truth about Jesus. Verse 6, And I saw another angel flying in mid-heaven, having an eternal gospel to preach to those who live on the earth and to every nation and tribe and tongue and people. So here's an angel that as he's flying, he's preaching the gospel, and there is not anyone who won't hear it. There won't be any excuse. No one will be able to say, Well, I didn't hear the gospel. God is sending an angel to accomplish that task. Verse 7, And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Judgment day is here. <clears throat> um, and worship him who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the springs of waters. So fear God, give him glory, worship him. It's judgment day. All right, so that's uh, one angel. Uh, verse 8, and another angel, this is the second one, following, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She who has made all the nations drink of the wine of the passion of her immorality. Second angel, Babylon is fallen. Now, where is Babylon? What city is Babylon? There's a lot of speculation about that. It could be an actual city called Babylon, which has yet to be built. Um, it, you know, it could be New York. It could be um, anything. Hey, Mike, glad you're on board with us. So the angel is saying, it's fallen. It's done. It's ruined. Um, and there's more about that in, in future readings in Revelation. Verse 9, and another angel, this is a third angel, um, and another angel, a third one, followed them saying, with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives a mark on his forehead or upon his hand, mm, he also will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is mixed in full strength in the cup of his anger, and he will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. That is a description of hell. Um, <clears throat> so, 
You can't take the mark of the beast. You cannot worship the beast. You cannot worship the image of the beast. Yet you might be beheaded, but you'll have eternal life in heaven if you've surrendered to Christ and salvation. But you cannot partake of what uh, the beast is forcing people to do. So you have to reject it and, and take the take the punishment that he's going to give you. Um, but that is not reserved for those of us who are saved now. We will not go through this because the Bible says we are not um, destined for wrath because we've been saved by the blood of the Lamb. Verse 11, And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever, and they have no rest day and night, those who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his uh, name. Um, reiteration. God's saying it a second time. If you didn't catch it the first time, he's saying it the second time, don't take the mark of the beast, don't worship the beast, don't worship his image, because if you do, you're going to be tormented with fire day and night forever and ever. Oh, verse 12, here is the perseverance of the saints. Perseverance of the saints. Remember that phrase? It's a catchphrase. It means uh, once, once saved, always saved. Perseverance of the saints. Here is the perseverance of the saints, verse 12, who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. Do what the Bible says and keep your faith in Jesus. It's that simple. Worship God, love God, do what he tells you. All right, verse 13, and we'll wrap it up right here. It's 10 minutes after. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors for their deeds follow with them. Now, certainly blessed was everyone who died before this because they don't have to go through the tribulation, but the Bible is telling us, God is telling us, the Spirit is telling us plainly, those who die here on out, they're blessed. Um, they're not going to receive the torment that is described in the verses prior to this because their labors and their deeds are going to follow them and uh, they will be rewarded in heaven forever. Um, that wraps up our 13 verses. Rest and rewards. All right. So, <clears throat> what is our application? What is our takeaway from here? So we believe in, in the pre-tribulational rapture. Uh, you all can argue with me about that if you want. That's our belief. That's what we're standing on. So <clears throat> that being the case, if you are saved and born again, blood-bought believer in Jesus Christ who has surrendered, um, then you will not see this. You'll be raptured up. Um, so, with that in mind, you don't want anybody that you know, anybody that you meet, anybody anywhere to go through this. You want to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. You want them to know that there's a way out. There is a God who loves them, who has prepared a place for them, and would love to spend eternity with them, with you and with me. Um, all right, so if you don't have a church, we'd like to be your church. If you don't have a pastor, Pastor Tom and I would like to be your pastors. So <clears throat> let's close with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you so much for all my brothers and sisters who are watching, who will be watching. I pray that you bless them, Lord. Um, pray that you will encourage them to share this and use this to win people to Christ, to guide people uh, into discipleship. And we thank you. We love you. We give you all the glory in Jesus' precious and holy name. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Take care. Bye-bye.